Good morning. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and applying this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. This study is title is the altar of daniel chapter 7 to expose the trinitarians dear lord i present this study before you lord as you've placed it on my heart as an altar as did elisha build the altar with the 12 stones lord before the 450 prophets of Baal. I pray, Lord, that the very, very few that come to this channel and watch this study, and even the fewer who understand it, can be blessed by this, Lord, and may eyes be opened even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. A few months back, I did, actually, I think it was a month ago or so, I did a detailed study, and this is essential background and actually the prerequisite to this study that I'm doing here today. The title, the blog title and video is, I love using Daniel <clears throat> chapter 7, verse 13, to debunk Trinitarians. In this blog, in the links of the description box here, you can read the blog. I urge you, like I said, this is essential. The video is also, link is in here. As you can see in the video, and the t also I'll have it in the blog here, and I'm going to point this out in this study. Very, it's shocking, but very, I'd say the vast, vast majority the over, in fact, I can't even put numbers on it, but the vast majority of so-called Christians actually believe that when they're praying to God, they're praying to a man with a white beard or some imagination they have in their mind on a throne. And then here's little Jesus, the second person of their Trinity. He's up there somewhere. There's two gods they pray to, and they know that they're taught there's three, the third one being the Holy Spirit, and then they call these persons God the Father person, and then the second person, Jesus Christ, and then that's the third person, the Holy Spirit. But of course, they can't quite figure out where that dove or person is and where his throne's at. And they, I say his, since it's a person, they have to say his, right? But this declaration is as follows. Just as Elijah made an altar before the prophets of Baal, I here now today present an altar, and this study is the altar, before the Trinitarians. And I ask the reader and viewer of this blog, whomever you are, the very few of you are out there. You've been led of the Lord to read the blog, to watch the video, to observe what I say, and then take what I'm going to show you from a prominent study in Daniel chapter 7, focusing on Daniel 13, verse 13 of Daniel chapter 7, and choose which of these is of the Lord and which is not. Now, if you really, truly are honest with yourself, and the Holy Spirit has not. That is the living, the Spirit of the living God. That is the Spirit of Christ, Jesus himself in you. If you're truly of his, your heart will be pricked to the core, and you'll see, you will truly see and understand that the Trinitarian concept, it's not even doctrine, that the Trinitarian concept 
it's not biblical doctrine. It's not even doctrine, and it's called uh, consistently called doctrine. It is not. The fallen Laodicean church even calls it one of the primary key major doctrines of the Christian faith, and that's a lie from hell. The truth is that the Trinity is pagan. It's polytheism, and that is the truth. Let God arise and every man be a liar. In my study, I love Daniel chapter 7, 13 to debunk Trinitarians. I want to take first, and I'm going to focus on Daniel 7, 13. Now, those of you who have watched the study, or watched the video and read the study, you know what this is about. But those of you who have not, I'm going to open the study link up. And just highlight one part. Let's go to this. Now, here's all the background. I want you to read it if you haven't. I'm not going to do the whole study. I've already done it. But what Daniel chapter 713 is showing us is Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ, the only person, there's not three persons, people. He is the only person, the body in the fullness of the Godhead who is the Ancient of Days, comes in the glory of God with the armies of heaven to earth in the second coming. This is what Daniel 7, 13 is about, okay? And in this, he brings forth with the angelic beings and saints to come down from heaven in the second coming, the scriptures associated the main ones here, now there are the minor prophets, it's discussed in Hosea, in Amos, in Malachi. But the main scriptures are Revelation chapter 19, Zechariah chapter 14, 5, Daniel, of course I'm in now, 7, 9 through 14, and Daniel chapter 7, 18, Daniel chapter 7, 27, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 10, and then in Jude chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. So let's get into Daniel 7, 13, and it is written in the King James Bible, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. First, let's look at came to the Ancient of Days. We see that from the Hebrew origin of uh, 4672, taken from 4291, in the intransitive, this is the sense of being found present. I say again, when you read, came to the ancient of days, this is saying, and was found present. This means to exist as mighty and courageous. The Oxford English Dictionary, page 473, come in this context means make an appearance as and in come into view as the Ancient of Days. I'll say that again. So when we see this, when it says here that one like the Son of Man came with the clouds here, and it says, and, and, and came to the Ancient of Days, all this is saying is Jesus Christ himself came forward to be present. Jesus Christ, make no mistake, he comes into view as the Ancient of Days because Jesus Christ, people, is the Ancient of Days. I have the scriptures. Read the background studies. This blog and video is not to spoon feed you every little bite. To give what I do is give you the truth. 
from doctrine. Doctrine is the teaching of Jesus Christ teaching his word, which is himself. Our job is to study, and study is hard work. Doctrine is given in the King James Bible. If we harmonize Daniel chapter 7, 9 with Revelation chapter 1, 14, make your notes, and then make your notes right in here, Micah chapter 5, 2, we see that the Ancient of Days is an expression applied to Jehovah in the vision of Daniel. Jehovah. Jehovah, it means that God is eternal and has no beginning or end. In Daniel's vision, the Ancient of Days is described as having what? A white garment, pure wool, hair, a fiery thorn, and burning wheels. Now, where do we see this? If we want to know what Jesus looks like, John tells us in Revelation chapter 114. Go to Revelation chapter 114 for me, please. This, I want to stop and actually read with you. Open your Bible to Daniel, the correction, Revelation chapter 1, and look at verse 14. Now, without going into a lot of background, this is Jesus Christ here we're talking about in the book of Revelation chapter 1. We can see 13, right? Uh, like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flaming fire. Now, this can also, <coughs> excuse me, take this to Daniel 7, 9, and 10. This is describing the same person. So when we see the Ancient of Days, and also, when you see in the links, there are several, several scriptures when we see that God Almighty is the Ancient of Days, and that is Jesus Christ. There's not two persons. There's not an Ancient of Days sitting in a throne, and there's Jesus Christ in another throne. John, John in the third heaven, when he sees in Revelation 1-7, and it's in my study links, read the background study notes. As I said, essential studies. If you do not read those study links... You're, you will be walking into a college calculus class without having any understanding of algebra. You have to understand and do the background, please. Now, let's talk about when it says, and they brought him near before him. They brought him near before him, the final sent ending sentence of Daniel chapter 7, 13. What does this mean? Well, they, these are the angels in heaven, brought him, this is Jesus Christ, near before means that the angels present, they bring to Jesus Christ, and actually more specifically, the angels, the heavenly hosts of angels, bring to Jesus Christ, they bring the battle, and this is the battle of Armageddon, the sec his second advent, before him. I'll say it again. And they, that means the angels, brought Jesus Christ, this is the battle of Armageddon, they brought the battle before Jesus Christ. They present it before Jesus. I'll say it again. And they brought him near before him literally means that the angels, angelic hosts, bring Jesus Christ to approach or to the battle that's presented before himself, Jesus Christ. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, 7. Let's harmonize Scripture with Scripture. Revelation chapter 1, 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, this is Jesus Christ, and every eye shall see him. And they also, 
which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth will wail because of him, even so. Amen. Now, we know that it's Jesus Christ that's coming in the second advent. There's not two gods, God the Father, old man, and then God the Son, second person. Who's who's who? And when you look at the Trinitarians, it's complete insanity. So what am I saying? Daniel chapter 7, 13 there are not two persons here. There's not Jesus, the Son of Man, and then another old daddy, God the Father, is called the Ancient of Days. All Daniel chapter 7, 13 is saying Jesus Christ is coming in the clouds in the second advent, and the angelic host brings Jesus Christ himself to the battle that's before him. Let's read Matthew Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man, that's Jesus Christ, shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Again, there's not Jesus Christ saying, Daddy, I'm going to go now down talking to another God, another person. In the glory of, that means the Spirit of God, the living God himself, which no man has seen, it's spirit, not a body, not a person. It resides, that spirit resides within Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ, just like you created in the image of God. You have three parts. You have body, soul, and spirit. I can't see your spirit. It's not a separate person. Your spirit abides in you as the intrinsic essence of who you are spiritually. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, who being in the brightness of his glory, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. This means that Jesus Christ is the very person and image. Image means a body, fullness of the Godhead bodily of God Almighty. These are not, this does not mean that Jesus Christ is the image of another separate person. That otherwise, there would, it would not make sense. He is God Almighty. When it says, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, in the study links, again, you have to understand that this is a metaphor. When on the right hand or at the right hand, this means that Jesus Christ has all of the power and authority and dominion of all things is given into him. Otherwise, just like when Stephen looked up and saw Jesus Christ standing on the right hand, that means literally you'd say, oh, Jesus is standing on the old man's hand. It's a metaphor, people. When applying basic English grammar, we know that the antecedent of the pronoun his with person is God. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head pure wool, and the throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as a burning fire. We know as I showed you earlier, that the Ancient of Days is Jesus Christ. We know that, he, that, that, that all through Scripture, any time when we talk about God, we're talking about Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God. I can't stress that enough. When John was in heaven, in Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3 and throughout, when John was only saw one person sitting on the throne. It's in the studies. Now, part of this, as I said, 
the prerequisite background is reading the link on using Daniel 7.13 to debunk Trinitarians. I have the extensive study on the shock and awe of Hebrews. In this study, I go in deeply what it means when it says that Jesus is the express image of his person, meaning God Almighty. Further down in the study, you will see the shock and awe of Hebrews. Open the link, click on the link, and let me do this with you now here. In the blog link, click on the shock and awe of of Paul's sermon in Hebrews. There you'll see the entire deep study, an hour and 16 minutes of the video. If you go click on the blog and associated study links, the actual blog of the shock and awe of Paul in the book of Hebrews, it's in here. The link, the shock and awe of Paul's sermon in the book of Hebrews. Now scroll down in this study. This is the study I showed you as essential background information, the prerequisite. Scroll down, uh, well, read, read the study carefully. Take your time, read the associated links, and I urge you to pay specific attention, and actually I'm gonna highlight that in this main blog, of understanding that what Paul did in the book of Hebrews, and that's why I call it the first shock of the shock and awe, is that Paul, writing to the Hebrews, the Jewish Christians, and, and actually announcing it to the entire Jewish world, hey, everyone, you know there's only one God, but I'm telling you this one God is Jesus Christ. Here, the former Jews who are now new creatures in Christ, are faced with the shock that Jesus Christ is actually the God, the one first person, the only person who is God. And this Godhead, dear saint, not three gods, not three persons, but one God who is Jesus Christ is the only person in body. Now in this, if you have not studied the pagan trinity concept that was wrongly taught as biblical doctrine, please read. This is a several-hour study how that the Hebrews for the age of grace is applied to the church, that Trinity is a pagan practice of polytheism in mainstream Christianity. Read and understand, come and meet my kinsman redeemer and the associated links. Okay, I'll just leave that here. I'll leave that alone. Let's move on. Now going back, I'm going to go back to the original blog of this declaration. This is the altar I'm building and, and that I have presented, actually, that I've built for the glory of the Lord. I now ask you to open up the Enduring Word Bible Commentary, Daniel chapter 7. In the Enduring Word, Bible commentary, Daniel chapter 7. We see here that David Gusick, he being a pastor, so called pastor, a Bible teacher, and author of a widely used Bible commentary. Millions of people use David's online Bible commentary, it writes here, on such sites as Enduring Word, the Blue Letter Bible. And David's statement of faith and explanation of beliefs regarding Christian doctrine can be seen here. I urge you to see that this man obviously is a Trinitarian, a false teacher who uses a perverted Bible. And any time, take it from me, any time you click on any study involving the Bible, his study along with many others that are false teachers are going to pop up right up on top. This is no mistake, people. In this Laodicean age, where all the false teachers run rampant, you can read his studies, and people swallow it, the lies, and they believe it. They stand on it. So David tells us that the Ancient of Days and the scene surrounding his throne, he tells us that 
verses 9 and 10, he says, I watched till the thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. Now, he writes, quote, I watched till the thrones were put in place. The King, the King James Version poorly translates this as thrones were cast down. The New King James Version corrected this and indicates that the thrones were established. So let's look at the context and background of Daniel chapter 7. If you're not familiar with Daniel 7, as we know, Daniel's been given this vision of the end time events, which the when the Antichrist comes on the scene. But as background, and as Daniel opens in chapter 7, we're seeing the same picture of Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the giant, of the giant statue. Now, the first, second, third, and fourth beasts that Daniel's talking about here in Daniel 7, we see represented by the uh, lion with wings as Babylon, and then the uh, medial Persian Empire, which is the bear, and then Greece is the leopard. Now, when we get, uh, look at uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 7. Now we see this fourth beast as being dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet of it and was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, this final fourth beast is the Roman Empire. As the Roman Empire weakened and dwined, and it was just a remnant of history, we are told that ten horns will come up from that Roman Empire. Now, these ten horns represent the 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 uh, 10 kingdoms that are actually in place now, but they're developing as we can see them. Now, I'm not talking about the kings of the East, which is obviously China. This did not come out of the Roman Empire, but let me clarify this. These 10 kingdoms follow after the Roman Empire. In other words, there were four great, mighty, superpower kingdoms and in the end of time, there will be 10 superpower kingdoms rising. Now, out of one of the horns, the little horn that's coming out from them, this is when the Antichrist comes on the scene. Now, when, so let's go back to Daniel to give you that, I told you the context and background. If we go back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, we see here, the King James is correct. When until the thrones were cast down. Now, how just just ask yourself this. If you're in a perverted Bible and not the King James, and I have all the information on why King James only in the links. If you can't find it or, or you're still have questions, please email me. If you're not in the King James Bible, you're in wrong doctrine, people. Now ask yourself this. Oh, I love my new King James Bible, but why would the new King James Bible say that these thrones were established, people? The former, these former thrones are cast down. Jesus Christ takes authority and power over these thrones. Why would they be put in place? Now, just ask yourself that. All right, now let's continue. So David uh, Gusick tells us here, Further, he says the Apostle John saw heaven, he saw thrones, and but he but he also saw that those who sat on those thrones, the twenty-four elders described in Revelation chapter four four. Daniel made no mention of these elders. Perhaps the twenty-four elder represent the church. The church was unrevealed mystery of the Old Testament saints. Now, people, these thrones have nothing to do with the tw the twenty-four elders that David's talking about here. Daniel wasn't talking about the thrones. And John, with the thrones, plural, that uh, John was talking about had nothing to do with Daniel 7. Okay, clarify that right now. Now, 
this is where it gets really interesting. Now, David writes, and the Ancient of Days was seated. The Ancient, I'm reading his work here, people. The Ancient of Days is obviously God, but there is debate as to if he is specifically God the Father or God the Son. Most believe it is God the Father, and the white garments and white hair stress the eternal character of God the Father. Stop here. I'm going to stop here and just pause. I'm not going to talk. I urge you. I beseech you. Beseech you in the deepest meaning means with a pain and love in my heart, reaching out, calling out to come out from among them people. Which... Which teaching are you going to believe? The doctrine from the King James Bible, which is Jesus Christ himself, the Word. He is the Ancient of Days. Or are you going to believe a confused, well, it might be the fa- God the Father, and there's nothing in the Bible that says God the Son. Most believe it's God the Father. God the Father is not the one in white garments dressed. It's not, but that's what is written here. I'm going to let you decide. I'm going to let you make that distinction. Choose. Choose today, listener. Is this the God you're worshiping? God the Father, the old man sitting here in a throne with God the Son, the second person of the so-called Trinity. Then there's God, the Holy Spirit, represented by a dove, this pagan concept. Choose. Is this what you're seeing in Daniel chapter 7, 13, the old man on the throne? The second person you're calling, demeaning Jesus Christ, is a second person? Choose. Which will you believe? In your mind's eye, excuse me, in your mind's eye, what are you seeing? Who are you worshiping? He writes that in Daniel 17, 13, seems to make a distinction between the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man. No, it does not. He says, though, it seems. And this supports the idea that the Ancient of Days is God the Father, not God the Son. Let me go further. He's a liar. You're a liar, Gusick. He writes, We ought not to imagine God in his essence to be like any appearance to his own prophet and other holy fathers, but he put on various appearances according to man's comprehension to whom he wished to give some signs of his presence. Of course, John Calvin wrote that. Enough said. Which is a lie from hell. His throne was a fiery flame. There is brilliant manifestation of God's splendor and fierce heat of his judgment. There seems to be something like lava in the stream fire pouring from the throne. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to let you, because he just goes deeper and deeper and deeper into into utter chaotic lies. I'm trying to see if there's anything. You know, that's enough. But people, what I'm trying to tell you, you saw what I present. You see what David Gusick presents. Which are you going to believe? That God is three separate persons, gods? Notice, I'm going to ask David Gusick and his fellow Trinitarian reprobates, where? Where is the other God, the Holy Spirit? Where is he hanging out? Oh, that's okay. We'll talk about that later. If you do not know what Elijah was doing when he built his altar, and what happened? What happened? What happened to the false prophets, to the prophets of Baal, the 450 of them? What happened? God surely will judge. And you know what? Trinity is no different from Baal worship. It's a different God you're worshiping. And I urge any Trinitarian, come on. I get so much hate mail from Trinitarians. I even get young, dumb Trinitarians try to say, look, 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 let's all 
come into an agreement, brother. I'm not your brother, Trinitarian. Let's all just agree to disagree, to get along. You say tomato, I say tomato. It's really not three gods, okay? That's the Catholic concept. See, we believe it's three persons, but not like person, person, but no, stop your vain imaginations. The Lord put this on my heart to do. Just as Elijah mocked the false prophets, I mock you, Trinitarians. I mock you. And as Elisha said, your God that you've invented in three persons, three gods, he's either talking to you or he's pursuing another journey. Pre-adventure, perhaps he sleeps or he must be awakened. You know what? Listen, forget the Trinitarians. They're finished. I'm asking you, if you're watching this video, to stop, to study, to pray, and ask the Lord to show you the truth. I will stop here. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.